today's uh, tutorial, we'll just discuss about the etiopathogenesis of cell injury. The learning objectives for uh, today's tutorial will be, uh, we'll understand the general mechanisms of cell injury, we'll talk about the various causes of cell injury, and then we'll discuss in detail about the pathogenesis of cell injury. Now, what are the, what are the general mechanisms uh, of cell injury? One, uh, four very interrelated cell systems are particularly vulnerable to cell injury. What are these four? One, the membranes. It could be the membrane of a cell as a whole or it could be a membrane of organelles within the cell. Uh, I mean to say that it could be a membrane of a mitochondria, it could be a membrane of uh, endoplasmic reticulum and so on. Two, the aerobic respiration is another important system which is very, very vulnerable to injury. The third one, the entire protein synthesis apparatus. It could be in the form of enzymes or the structural proteins. All these are vulnerable. And the last one is the genetic apparatus, which includes the DNA material and the RNA. These are more prone for injury. Now, uh, cell injury. We all know that in the last class, I just discussed about uh, the various cellular adaptations. And we know that when the cell is not able to adapt, it progresses to cell injury. Now, we need to know what are the important causes of cell injury. One, hypoxia. Uh, I say hypoxia is one of the most important and one of the most common causes of cell injury and death. Now, what causes hypoxia? One, reduce blood flow. It could be because of ischemia. Two, uh, inadequate oxygenation of the blood due to you know cardiorespiratory failure that's the second cause the third one in some cases like you know uh, in the cases of anemia in cases of carbon monoxide poisoning there will be decreased oxygen carrying capacity and that uh, is one of the important cause of hypoxia there the last one severe blood loss is another cause of hypoxia second one is uh, physical and chemical agents as the cause of cell injury now, what are these physical agents? The physical agents can be a mechanical trauma. It could be, you know, the extremes of temperature. It could be a radiation injury. It could be in the form of electrical shock and so on. Now, what are the chemical agents? See, there are n number of chemicals which can cause cell injury. I just cannot list any of them. So, as chemicals, uh, you know, uh, uh, oxygen, even oxygen uh, can be injurious in higher concentrations. Even glucose can be injurious in higher concentrations. So, almost all chemicals can be injurious. Moving on to the next cause of cell injury, the infectious and immunological causes. Any infectious agent you name, it can result in cell injury. Okay, so you can list the entire uh, uh, infectious agents uh, you see in your microbiology textbooks. Now, what are the immunological causes? We know that immune system is very, very important uh, 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 no component of our body which serves as uh, defense against various infectious pathogens. But we need to understand that immune, immune uh, reactions are a double-edged sword. Okay, so these immune reactions can also cause cell injury other than uh, being uh, as a protective mechanism for our body. Moving on to uh, genetics as a cause of cell injury. See, genetic abnormalities can be as subtle as single base pair substitution or as obvious as chromosomal abnormalities. So what happens in genetic abnormalities is that they can cause cell injury because of uh, deficiencies of functional proteins. It could be in the form of inborn errors of metabolisms. It could be in the form of uh, accumulation of damaged DNA. All these uh, results in susceptibility to injurious agents. Okay. Another important uh, cause of cell injury is nutritional imbalance. It could be in the form of nutritional deficiency or it could be in the form of nutritional excess. Nutritional deficiency in the form of protein energy malnutrition is another important cause of cell injury. Sometimes, you know, excess of nutrition can also cause injury. For example, you know, increased cholesterol uh, can lead to atherosclerosis. Of course, this is uh, a matter of debate uh, in the present scenario. Okay, another, another uh, example I can give you is obesity. Obesity is again associated with increased uh, uh, risk of uh, diseases like diabetes and cancer. So that means to say that nutritional deficiency as well as nutritional excess can result in cell injury. Now cell injury can also be iatrogenic. That means uh, you can expect cell injury uh, by accidental administration of certain drugs. 
in spite of knowing uh, so many causes of cell injury so many etiological factors for cell injury there are instances where you know you just can't make out what exactly resulted in this particular cell being injured that's when you call it as idiopathic so idiopathic is when you just can't make out any cause for cell injury okay so these are the various causes one is hypoxia physical chemical infectious immunological genetics nutritional iatrogenic and idiopathic now let's understand what are the mechanisms of cell injury in other words we're talking about what is the pathogenesis of cell injury the basic principles remains the same one the cell response to injury depends on the nature of injury the duration and the severity of the injurious agent okay when i when i say nature of injury it means it can be any of the causes which we listed before okay duration the shorter the duration the less the injury and the longer the duration and the persistent the duration it could be the injury could be very much more severity if the injurious agent is uh, in the milder form then there could be lesser damage and if the injurious agent is more severe then you can expect more damage see the outcome of the cell injury uh, depends upon the type of the cell the state and adaptability of the injured cell okay so when we are talking about the type of cell uh, two most uh, common examples which we can think of one the skeletal muscle versus the cardiac muscle okay the skeletal muscle is uh, very stronger compared to the cardiac muscle where the cardiac muscles are more vulnerable to injury uh, another example i can think of is the neurons the neurons are again more susceptible or more vulnerable for injury season than compared to the other muscles like cardiac muscles when i talk about adaptability uh, adaptability means we we, we have uh, i think we i have explained you uh, regarding adaptability in the last Uh, tutorial adaptability is nothing but it's just an altered state where it allows the cells to survive and continues to function in the abnormal environment uh, we should understand that some cells can be more adaptable compared to others examples for such cells which are highly adaptable are the cells of the respiratory tract okay the pseudo stratified ciliated coronary epithelium are more adaptable they can undergo uh, any types of adaptation including metaplasia okay and we also should understand that two individuals may respond differently to the same injurious agent and that's because of the genetic makeup of an individual okay now third injury results from uh, various biochemical mechanisms and that acts on several components within the cell when i say several components it could be in the mitochondria it could be in the membranes it could be in the cytoskeleton it could be in the protein machinery or it could be the nuclei of uh, uh, containing the dna or the rna okay now uh, let's understand the pathogenesis of cell injury by taking ischemia as an example so we all know that ischemia results in hypoxia and hypoxia is by definition is the deficiency of oxygen so what happens when there is deficiency of oxygen that results in decrease in oxidative phosphorylation okay so which results in decrease in atp we all know that atp is adenosine triphosphate which is the powerhouse of the cell and that's needed for membrane transport it's needed for protein synthesis it's also needed for lipogenesis as well now what happens when there is decreased atp so it can result in you know decrease in sodium pump and sodium pump is an energy dependent pump so once the sodium pump is decreased and that results in increase in the influx of calcium water and sodium and increase in the efflux of potassium that means that the calcium uh, enters into the cell along with water and sodium and the potassium moves out of the cell so what are the consequences of this so that results in the swelling of the cell the swelling of endoplasmic reticulum there will be loss of microvilli and then and, uh, in the extreme cases there can be the formation of the blebs the second important thing is that it can result in increased anaerobic glycolysis see already there is decreased atp you need more atp so the glycogen is being used so there is anaerobic glycolysis so once there is anaerobic glycolysis it results in three things one there is depletion of glycogen two there is increase in the amount of lactic acid and that results in decrease in the ph so once there is decrease in ph it causes clumping of nuclear chromatin okay 
Another important uh, thing what depletion of ATP does is some structural disruption of protein synthetic apparatus occurs. What, I mean, what do you mean by structural disruption of protein synthetic apparatus? That means there will be detachment of ribosomes. So once there is detachment of ribosomes from the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it results in decreased protein synthesis. We know that once the protein synthesis is decreased, there will be no lipoproteins also and that is the reason why there can be increased lipid deposition. So note that all these things are reversible if the injurious agent is withdrawn. That is, if the ischemia is withdrawn, up to this stage, the cell injury is reversible. Okay. Let us understand what happens when the injurious agent is persistent and also understand the role of calcium. See, calcium ions are uh, one of the most important mediators of cell injury. Uh, let us assume that this is a cell with its organelles like mitochondria and uh, endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. Now, we need to know that the levels of extracellular calcium is much higher as compared to intracellular calcium. Okay. Even within the cell, the calcium is present in the mitochondria and in endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. Now, what happens when there is persistent injury? As described before, there will be influx of calcium into the cell and the in and then the cytosolic calcium level increases. Cytosolic calcium level also increases because of the calcium moving out of mitochondria and the calcium moving out from endoplasmic reticulum as well. So that results in increased calcium in cytoplasm or increased levels of cytosolic calcium. So what happens when there is increased levels of cytosolic calcium? So that again increases in the accumulation of calcium in the mitochondria. Once the calcium accumulates in the mitochondria, that results in increased permeability transition, okay, which results in failure of oxidative phosphorylation and subsequently there will be depletion of ATP. Increased calcium in cytoplasm not only depletes ATP, it also causes activation of cellular intracellular enzymes. Now, what are these enzymes which are activated? One, they are phospholipases and proteases. Two, they are endonucleases. And three, they are ATPases. Now, what does phospholipases and proteases do? Phospholipases cleaves phospholipids. Proteases cleaves proteins. What proteins? It could be uh, proteins of the membrane. It could be proteins of the cytoskeleton. So it results in membrane and cytoskeletal damage. And two, the endonucleases cleaves the nuclear material resulting in nuclear damage. And the ATPases cleaves the ATP resulting in depletion of ATP. So this is a vicious cycle of depletion of ATP. So this is what happens in irreversible cell injury. Okay. So you need to understand that the calcium is a main cul culprit here. So increased calcium in the cytoplasm results in activation of various intracytoplasmic enzymes and that subsequently results in membrane damage, nuclear damage and depletion of ATP. Okay. So in summary, we have discussed about the general mechanisms of cell injury. We uh, discussed about the various causes of cell injury and the pathogens of cell injury particularly what ATP depletion does and what is the role of calcium and the role of mitochondria in irreversible cell injury okay if you want to access the PPTs of all these chapters you can just log into ilopathology.com if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button please do comment and don't forget to subscribe for updates of more videos which are going to come and please do share thank you